Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed update on potential Tropical Cyclone 1 for Tuesday, June the 18th, 2024. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making any decisions regarding potential Tropical Cyclone 1, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the latest information. So it's been nearly 24 hours since the National Hurricane Center has dubbed this potential Tropical Cyclone 1. This is not a tropical depression by any means or a tropical storm, but conditions look very favorable and the confidence for the National Hurricane Center thinking that this is going to be a tropical storm in the next couple of days is high enough for them to designate this as a potential tropical cyclone. But either way, th this is this is going to bring significant impacts to the coast of Mexico as well as Texas over the next couple of days. And storm surge is definitely going to be very high. So this look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery on PTC number 1. We can see that the system has gained a little bit more better organization over the last 24 hours. If we just take a look at the low-level cloud pattern with this system, it is definitely pretty organized. We have winds that are doing this on the northern side of the circulation, and they clearly wrap all the way around with northwesterly winds happening over the Bay of Campeche, and then they wrap all the way around here out of the southerly and southeasterly direction on the eastern and northeastern quadrants of PTC number one. When we zoom in closer on PTC number one, there are a couple of features that I want you to keep an eye on on this satellite imagery. First off, we have a little Vort Max. You can see a little bit of the spin in the atmosphere on the low level cloud motions satellite. But also there's another perturbation that is spinning up over here that just moved off of the northern Yucatan Peninsula. And it is going to be very interesting on how these two little Vort Maxes interact with each other that consolidates better into a more bona fide tropical depression or storm in the next 24 hours. Because uh, to the northeast of this is where we're really seeing the winds that are very strong, easily tropical storm force sustained with winds that are between 40 and even 50 miles an hour with winds gusting over 60 miles an hour. Even so, this is a disheveled system. Now, when we take a look at the water vapor imagery, though, this is a completely different picture when we look at this imagery. We can see, first off, these feathery white, milky white cirrus are doing this. So we have a fairly good outflow um, establishment on the northern and eastern quadrants of the circulation. And we're beginning to see some of that actually expanding off towards the west. Why this is very important is we're now beginning to change the upper level pattern in such a way that uh, potential tropical cyclone one could actually bonify and actually strengthen even regardless of how broad in nature it is. Really the thing that's setting this back in the first place is how broad in nature the system actually is because the conservation angular momentum law uh, uh, says that if you have a very tight circulation, it can spin up very quickly and it could also spin down very quickly as well. Versus a broader system like this, it takes a quite a bit of time for it to better consolidate and able to concentrate that angular momentum of spin to allow the system to otherwise intensify. But the up background stayed here with a lot of moisture in the deep layers and an anticyclonic uh, tropospheric ridge on top of the system is very optimal right now for PTC1 to further organize and strengthen. It's just a matter of time where those two Vort Maxes will likely consolidate into a system. Therefore, the National Hurricane Center is pretty confident that this will become a tropical storm by early tomorrow morning. And if this gets named, it would be Tropical Storm Alberto, our first named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. And additional strengthening even into tomorrow afternoon is possible. And this doesn't surprise us given, again, the background state that's pretty favorable with that anti-cyclonic flow. Sea surface temperatures beneath the cyclone are very warm in the mid-80s and a lot of upper or a lot of heat content and also a lot of moisture that is in the deep layers does allow the system to possibly reach 50 mile an hour winds right before landfall, which would be a fairly strong tropical storm for the time of the year that we're in. And of course, 
the Central American gyre are notorious of spitting up these systems pretty ferociously. Now, taking a look at our key messages for potential Tropical Cyclone 1, as this is a pretty significant system by all standards, including for southeastern Texas. So users are reminded to not focus on the exact forecast track of this system. The disturbance is pretty large with heavy rainfall that is anticipated. Coastal flooding and wind impacts are likely to occur far from the center along the coasts of Texas and northeastern Mexico. Rainfall associated with potential tropical cyclone 1 will impact large regions of Central America, north across northeastern Mexico, and into south Texas. This rainfall will likely produce considerable flash flooding and urban flooding along with new and renewed river flooding. Mudslides are also possible in areas of higher terrain across Central America and northeastern Mexico. Moderate coastal flooding is likely along much of the Texas coast beginning today and continuing through midweek. Tropical storm conditions are expected to begin tonight or Wednesday along portions of Texas coast south of the Port O'Connor and along portions of the coast of northeastern Mexico within the tropical storm warning area. Now the earliest reasonable arrival time of tropical storm force winds are as follow. So of course for southern Texas there is a 5 to 10 percent chance of tropical storm force winds arriving as early as Wednesday early morning. So that's why you need to make sure you are prepared for heavy rainfall, flooding, storm surge, that sort of thing, because this tropical storm or potential tropical cyclone is fairly large and it is not small at all. In fact, it covers or the circulation covers pretty much um, half of the Gulf of Mexico right now. Looking at our peak storm surge forecast, so as follows, mouth of the Rio Grande portion of the coast of Texas could see up to one to three feet of storm surge. So this includes for if you are in Corpus Christi, if you are in portions there of say Galveston, you could see up to two to four feet of storm surge Sabine Pass, as well as the coastal Louisiana near Vermilion, Cameron, Parish lines there could see up to one to three feet of storm surge. And remember, just because it is not designated as a tropical storm right now, it's not going to matter a whole lot. The impacts are going to be pretty much the same, and they are pretty much set in stone at this time, with catastrophic heavy rainfall, flooding, and potential storm surge along the coast of Texas. Looking at our rainfall forecast over the next three days from the Weather Prediction Center, definitely highlighting quite a bit of rainfall with this, just because it is non tropical storm right now does not mean the impacts won't be that more severe. It doesn't matter a whole lot. 5, 10 plus mile an hour wind increase, not going to matter a whole lot. Houston, Texas could see 2 to 4 inches of rainfall. Corpus Christi across Houston, Texas, or southern Houston that is, could see 4 to 6 inches, perhaps even 8 inches or more in some of these areas. Some of the higher elevations here of the Rio Grande mountain range could see as much as 8 to perhaps almost 12 inches of rainfall with this system. Junction, Texas, maybe 1 to 2 inches. Midland, Texas, about an inch. If you're in an San Antonio area, maybe 2 to 4 inches. Austin, Texas, about 1 to 3 inches of rainfall. And if you are north of Waco, you're only going to see about a half an inch or less of rainfall. Brownsville, Texas, Laredo, uh, Texas, might see as much as 2 to 4 inches of rain. Remember, Tropical-like conditions are expected. Strong winds that could blow down trees could lead to property damage, uh, blown off roofs, as well as coastal flooding and coastal impacts, including, including large breaking waves, are expected with PTC-1, regardless of how intense it actually is. Now, looking at potential tropical cyclone 1 with its track forecast uncertainty here from the National Hurricane Center, First of all, there is a tropical storm warning out now for southern Texas into the northeastern coast of Mexico. So please take this very seriously, folks. A tropical storm warning means tropical-like conditions are expected, including very heavy rainfall, mudslides, coastal flooding, freshwater flooding, that sort of thing, including potential tornadoes and water spouts along the coast here of Mexico and Texas. This needs to be taken very seriously, even so this is not the strongest tropical storm or hurricane that we've seen this season yet, since we're still early in the Atlantic hurricane season. Please listen to the National Hurricane Center. They know what they're talking about, and I could only relay that information on based on what they're seeing. 
And right now, the cone of uncertainty is still fairly wide this far out. This could still impact portions of northern Texas, or, or not northern Texas, northern Mexico, or northeastern Mexico, that is, or it'd be as far south here as more like central Mexico coast, including some of the four bays here. And this would arrive by Wednesday late morning or early afternoon into the evening hours. But it's not going to whole matter a whole lot because look at the tropical storm force wind field. Very large from the center. Yeah, the center is here. And if you kind of draw a line, if this expands, you can kind of make an idea that southern coast of Texas really needs to be on the watch for coastal flooding, coastal impacts, fl um, freshwater flooding from heavy rainfall, and also some... Um, street flooding and some urban flooding. Now, as far as how strong the winds could actually end up being, according to the NAM three kilometer model, I know this is not a hurricane specialized model. Hurricane models are not handling this a whole lot very well. And that's because just how broad in nature this is, there's a lot of vort maxes that are hard to pinpoint on numerical global computer modeling. I um, mean, so we are going to do our best at uh, showing you how strong the winds could actually end up being. So of course, this is a look at that model and we can see um, some tropical storm force winds off the southeastern coast of Texas. When we go forward in time, we can see how those winds do remain fairly strong and on the order of 35 to 45 knots. Um, perhaps some of the more intense areas could have winds near 50 knots. That's about 60 miles an hour. That's pretty strong. That's almost a high grade tropical storm intensity. And then when we go forward here in time, we can see southeastern Texas could have 25 to 40 mile an hour winds with wind gusts well in excess of say 45 to even 55 miles an hour. So again, some property damage, including fresh water flooding is expected. Now, when we take a look now at um, the track or why is this not moving north as what you would typically expect? So when we take a look at the GFS, the Global Forecasting System Model Geopotential Height, um, some of the high-level drops on missions did feed in new model data to better correct on what's going on down here into the Gulf of Mexico. So first of all, we have this big ridge of high pressure over the um, northeastern U.S. This is what we call um, the eastern seaboard block um, in, in meteorological terms. We got the ridge here. We got a trough that is anchored and positioned like so over the western U.S., but the problem here is that this ridge is going to dominate and this ridge is actually going to back build. So we're going to see some heights increase over the high plains and eventually over to the desert southwest. And you can see why that is because we have another trough over here and then we have another trough axis like this. And of course, you can see. So the competing factor is here. We have more easterly dominant winds on the southern side of the upper level subtropical ridge that is over the northeastern U.S. And that allows the ridge to actually back build instead of forward building um, and propagate eastward. So we can see that here on the model, how this ridge does nose east uh, westward. You can see the leading edge of that where this trough over California is. So that's why this system is not going to bend northward. And instead, it's going to actually bend or it's going to continue to move towards the west northwest at about five to ten miles an hour. Uh, but once that ridge gets going, it will really start to be on the move. Now, remember how I talked about how favorable and conducive the environment over PTC1 actually is? That's because it actually is. So when we kind of look at where our system is, it is right underneath these very light uh, shear vector uh, amounts, right around 5 to 10 knots or so, and that's very conducive. Now, yes, there is a lot of shear here and there's a lot of shear over here, but this is more outflow dominant because when you think about it, our winds are doing this kind of going inward. So that kind of, and again, shear is direction change with height. In this case, it's speed change with height. So you can kind of factor in that while upper level winds are um, also conducive um, out of that direction, you can see this anti-cyclonic flow, which is also why, again, we have that shear um, that is very light. And then eventually that moves on shore and then the shear might increase thereafter because the system is going to be more on the northerly shear side of the system. Another product that I want to show you all is the deep layer moisture plot. So turquoise colors in shading here indicate lots of moisture. Browner colors indicate a lot of dry air in the deep layers of the atmosphere and that makes sense 
based on our satellite imagery. If we look at water vapor, these dark um, black or these dark colors indicate drier air. These brighter colors other than the cloud cover indicate how much moisture there is. This really illustrates this very well. And so when we go forward here in time, we can see this big gulch of moisture, this plume that is, that's going to be moving over central Texas, southeastern Texas. And that is exactly why there's going to be a lot of heavy rainfall and a lot of flooding in this area because there's enough lift in the atmosphere to actually allow this to fall. And there, this is going to be moving through at a fairly slow rate and that's going to really allow rain amounts to accumulate and again some areas could see eight to perhaps nine inches of rain in some of these areas and houston got really plagiarized by that mini derecho that mini hurricane type storm from a thunderstorm complex nearly over a month ago and this area has seen quite a bit of the moisture lately and more moisture to come is going to lead to more concerns but anyways that summarizes for potential tropical cyclone one as always please be safe folks i can only do my job at providing as detailed weather information as i can possible because of how significant this situation actually is i will be providing a live stream tomorrow perhaps on this system as long as it remains a serious threat so for any of those that live in southeastern Texas, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, please take care. Please be weather safe. Be prepared. Don't be scared. And I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed update on this tropical disturbance.